She's April. And she's Molly. And we are the Book Besties. Because, you know, we never do spoilers on this show ever. Just eat, poop, sleep. Searching Audible in Audible. She is sugar curiosity in rain. Bro, if it can't, y'all came with a manual, a lot more of us would be doing better. I feel vindicated. I'm so mad at you. You tricked me. <laughs> what the fuck was that? You were kind I, this time. I loved it. It's because I was like kind of a dick last time. So. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. That was so weird. Um, okay. So, hey, um, I have to tell you about what happened last night. So, my oldest son, James, started doing Ninja Jim. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. He loves Ninja. He loves it. So he, he like for two summers in a row has like memorized all the ninja American Ninja Warrior oh, stats. And stats? And, like, yeah, yeah, he's like obsessed. So he wanted to try it. He's not very athletic, but you know, he's been doing it now. But so he's trying. Right. So. so he's had three weeks of it and he's actually improved a lot and it's really helping with his coordination and we're hoping it's gonna help with fine motor skills as well. Yeah. You know, so he's enjoying it. Um, mm-hmm. So Sam was like, I want to go with you tonight. I want to see James go up with the wall. Like, I want to see him do ninja. And I was like, okay, well, listen, Sam, if you come with us, you are absolutely not allowed to do it. Like, you're not in the class. You cannot do ninja. And he's like, that's okay. I want to go and see James. Right. And then um, Tom says, I say, Tom, what do you think? And he's like, Sam, you know that if you go, you can't do ninja. Like, you can't be in the class. We're paying for James. We're not paying for you. You can't do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's okay. I want to I wanna see James. And I'm like, in the car. We get in the car. And I'm like, okay, Sam, you know when we get there, you can't do it. Like, it's not for you. It's James's class. What do you think the first thing was he does did when we walked in? Can I do that? Can I do it too? Jane. Ugh. That is the ADHD brain, man. <laughs> I was like, That's Sam, like- no, you cannot. I told you three times. I have told you thrice. <laughs> you cannot participate. That so- is the little boy mind. He's like, so- toys! <laughs> so then he was like, well, can I can I sign up for the class? And I'm like, you play soccer. And he's like, I don't, I want to do this. And I was like, okay, well, listen, you cannot start until soccer season is over. And if we put you in Ninja, you cannot play soccer for the rest of the year. No spring soccer for you. He's like, yeah, okay, cool. And then, so I put him on the wait list and like, I'm a little weary about it. James was like, I don't know if Sam should be in my class. Maybe he won't be athletic enough. And I was just like, Okay, well, I don't know how to tell you this, buddy, but your brother's athleticism, it's, uh, it, yeah, I don't want to compare the two of you. You both have great merits. But, I love you both so much. I love but, you both so much. My concern was more that, like, Sam will surpass James and James will be pissed Chris about it. Feelings. But yeah. but Tom said he doesn't think that's the case. But uh, anyway, so the other funny thing that happened in the car was I was telling them their birth stories. They asked me questions about these kind of things a lot. And so I told them about their birth stories again. And I was telling them about how James had to stay in the NICU because he had jaundice. Um, but when it came to Sam, like nobody told me that if I would have given James a bottle that he probably would have gotten over the jaundice faster. Right. Like, I was bound and determined I was going to breastfeed him. And, um, you know, the nurses were just like, yeah, if you give him a bottle, it, it won't help your milk supply. So I was listening to them. And then with right. Sam, I was like, when he started showing a little bit of jaundice, I was like, get the bottles. Let's go get some right. formula in him. We don't time and, for this. and the lactation consultants were like, what are you doing? Like, that'll help hurt your milk supply. I was like, I don't care. We're not doing the NICU again. And so I was telling them that without using the words breasts and yeah. formula. I was just right. like, you know, telling them the story. And I was like, so when Sam came along, I knew what to do better. So he didn't go in the NICU. And James goes, mommy, didn't you read the manual? Like, Bro, if it came, y'all came with a manual, you don't a come lot with more of us would be doing better. You don't come with a manual, but the things that like you could read before getting pregnant or while you're pregnant or to be a mom, I had read all of them. So you know what, son? I don't know what to tell you. As a person that purchased the books and skimmed them, <laughs> it didn't help either. Like you're going to read all the books, friends. Let I read you. all the books. All the books. 
I read all the books. And nothing prepares you for a tiny human coming out of your body. No. No. The best book I read about um, early motherhood was actually Eat, Poop, Sleep, which I'll put a link below. But it's a pediatrician, and he talked about how basically if your kid does these three things, then you are raising your child right because this is all infants have to do is eat, poop, sleep. Poop, sleep. And um, it was a really good book. I liked that one a lot. But again, still didn't prepare me for my child to be in the NICU and, you know, as a mother, two weeks two early NICUs. and emergency C-section. And I mean, I got two NICUs babies. I hear you. Like, yeah, Piper was full term mm -hmm. in the NICU with mm -hmm. preemie weights. That kid still has a dormant brain bleed. Mm. We're just, you know, she's living yeah. it. And lives yeah. just, well, you know. Tater's so just tiny. Just nice. I love it. She was asked the other day. Did I tell you that she was asked the other day if she was on the right bus? No, she wasn't. So their school, this is actually a perfect lead into this. Their school has busing issues right now. It is a fucking All the schools now. have busing issues right and now. Then, like, it is bad. Okay, so first they were on a bus and it was three kids to a seat. There was too many kids on their first bus. Uh -huh. So they divided the bus route. Now there's only six kids on their bus. When the lady, six total, six total. They six didn't divide kids. it correctly. <laughs> That's not <laughs> the old bus has sixty three kids now instead of seventy. Whatever, it doesn't <laughs> matter. It, it's still not a great number, and they're actually still having meetings about it. So the kids' buses will probably change again. So the new, I walked up with them that morning because it was still like the second week, mm -hmm. and they told me it was a new bus, and I was just wanted to put eyes on the bus driver, you know, because bus drivers and you never know right i appreciate okay. the job but stranger danger so i'm up there and i'm waiting with them and the bus driver pulls up and it's us and the other kid that walks from down the street to get on the bus and the other kid gets on piper gets on and then Liv puts a step on the foot and the bus driver who's as old as my grandma goes you know this is the bus for the middle school right <laughs> looking dead at livia and they go She's in middle school and she goes, Oh, and she looks at Livia and she goes, My apologies. And she just lets <laughs> live on the bus. <laughs> what the hell? That's hilarious. My apologies. <laughs> My apologies. It makes me think of that scene in uh, Forrest Gump. You understand this is a bus to go to the school boy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can't sit with us. Can't, Can't sit here. Yeah. <laughs> But no, she was like, mm, that lady always gives me a lollipop now, mommy. Yeah, she feels that. <laughs> she called you a toddler. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> she feels bad. Oh, man. Oh. Okay, so you want to talk about what we're here to talk about? I guess books it is. We are here to talk about this book. Fuck this that week. book. Nope. 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 No, you, you didn't. Made me mad. I didn't even say the motherfucking title yet. I'm so mad at you. You tricked me. I thought this was gonna be a fun book. I don't know why you thought it was gonna be a fun book. Does this cover look like it's like inspiring fun? I don't know. Okay, it's called um, "We Were Liars" by E. Lockhart. <laughs> that's what I get for not reading the synopsis. <laughs> the back of the book literally says a satisfying but shocking twist ending. I literally don't pick up haunting, books sophisticated, I twisted, twisty, and well told. I don't know why you're expecting nonstop fun <laughs> because on Audible. <laughs> this is what you get when you download it. Let me show you. Hashtag not sponsored. Oh, I'm searching Audible in Audible. We're, we're doing great here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. See, that's you know, what you get. When you look at Audible, that's what you get. None I, of that. No, no one can see that. It is just a blur. It, what I'm saying is that it says nothing about it being scary. I told you I picked it for spooky season. Number one on the New York Times seller, a modern, sophisticated. Oh, okay. I guess suspense is the third word. Fuck me. <laughs> yes. I I'm feel Apple. vindicated. Give me a synopsis. <laughs> okay. The synopsis <laughs> is as follows. Caden Sinclair Eastman is the oldest grandchild of the Sinclair family, a family of old money nor Northeastern Democrats. Her grandparents, Harris and Tipper, have given their three daughters every luxury life could offer, including their own personal summer home on the family's private 
Island. I want a private island. Island. Off the coast of Martha's Vineyard. So that's how mother yeah, I don't want it. Are. That is money. <laughs> Each year, Katie makes mis- mischief with her fellow liars, Johnny, Mirren, and Gat. That is until year 15 when Katie suffers a head trauma from an accident she cannot remember. Katie's mom protects her from the trauma by separating her from the island, her cousins, and her boyfriend, Gat for year 16 while Katie has to, tries to heal. For year 17, Katie is back and the liars attempt to help her remember the tra- family tragedy she has been repressing for far too long. That's, this a, book, that's the synopsis. I skipped your questions. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, I mean, last week I didn't even read yours, so. <laughs> We're good. It's fine. There's grace for that. Um, I'm just going to move so. this thing over here so I can see my computer better. Okay. Oh. All right. <clears throat> Are you ready for your first question? No, but let's do it. <laughs> I mean, did you me like out. it? Did you like it? I loved it? this book. I okay, loved good. this book. I picked I it for okay you, Molly. I picked I it for you. I know you did, and I appreciate that because yeah. I haven't picked a book for you in a while. And I think <laughs> this you're is, mad at me. <laughs> this is, I'm not mad at you, but I am really tired of reading historical fantasy and mystery. I mean, I thought you'd like the Duke and I, so... I did not hate the Duke and I, but we'll find out more about that in November. Um, yeah. <laughs> Katie is an unreliable narrator because she has a brain injury. Did you like the author's choice to reveal the story slowly through Katie's memories? I loved this book. I loved this book. I I was on, I had no idea what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And you know that is hard to do with me. Yeah. Like, I, I, at first I was like, oh, they're making jokes about the rocks. I think it's the rocks. Then it wasn't the rocks. Then it was the other thing. And we're going to get to it. I'm sure. But like, I was just, it had, it was a surprise for me. And you know, that doesn't happen a lot. Yeah. But I don't want to give away the twist yet, but you no. actually figured it out before I did. What? I know. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, so I I liked the way that she chose to like um, reveal things slowly. I mean, you and I have said this before. We love an unreliable narrator. We love an unreliable it was, narrator. It was interesting choice to make it because of a brain injury. Like she's not necessarily um, not telling us the truth because she's, she's trying. She's not choosing to be an unreliable narrator. Right. Right. And that makes it more interesting, I think. Right. I think that makes the story because she doesn't know if she's a reliable narrator. Right. She doesn't know anything. She and, doesn't. Right. And the fact that we're learning with her and it, it makes you sympathetic to her instantly because right. you're like, we're all confused, Tommy. Let's. Right. Oh, and I love oh. a first person uh, point of view anyway. Like, that is mm-hmm. my my preferred point of view, which I think is pretty common because you can become the character. Um, but Katie is easiest to write to it. I think so. I think it would be because you're just writing. uh, Right. You're putting yourself in the shoes of the character, but then it becomes complicated when you have, you need to tell from someone else's point of view. So, I mean, I guess you can get both sides of it, but I thought my my problem is, is like I write in first person and slip into third and go back to first and slip into third and go into first. Well, don't do that because then I won't want to read your stuff. (laughs) It's very confusing to everybody and I don't do it on purpose. Anyways. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but I liked that she didn't really know what happened. And so, you know, yeah. she's, she doesn't understand why Mirren and Johnny and Gat have basically bailed on her. Like she's been emailing them and she's been sending them packages. Like, and I just assumed they were pissed at her. Like she created this domino effect that got everybody in trouble, but because right. she is who she is, I thought Beatrice had betrayed them and threw them under the bus or gotten what's her name is katie (laughs) beatrice was (laughs) midnight bargain (laughs) cadence or katie katie i thought katie had thrown gat the Mm -hmm. boyfriend right yeah under the bus i thought she had thrown him under the bus or gotten him in a lot of trouble right and everybody was just mad at her for like getting gat in trouble and i I was assuming talking to her I was assuming that her and Gat like hooked up because she was found oh, like about clothes 
and yeah. they got caught and like then he got in a lot of trouble because we sort of learn as the story goes on that um the granddad whose name is Harris is that right mm, that sounds right yeah Harris yeah Harris who um he they keep referring to him as you know old money democrat and one of the granddad. things that one of the things Gat talks about is how he doesn't think that he's racist but he's actually actually racist, racist. and so that's... he doesn't want gat to be with K- katie or his daughter to be with gat's um uncle because they're indian and mm-hmm. um you know like he doesn't want that because that ruins the perfect image of their white family with blonde hair and blue eyes and all that um, but he's so not I, racist but he's not racist he's you know he he voted for obama that's one of the things that's said in here he's not racist he voted for obama he's got but a he black friend but he doesn't want any darkening skin to spoil his perfectly Creamy. white Creamy. family family no that's always like that's always one of my favorites i have a black friend right right if right. you have one black friend if you're counting them on one hand and you feel like you need to use that as a reasoning it doesn't even matter how many black friends you have if you use that as as a justification to say stuff that's not that's just not okay in a way what you're saying and explain then, that you're then not, it's a not racist. okay you're racist if you have to explain that you're not a racist and you're like defending something you said. Most mm-hmm. likely, you said something racist. Right. 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 Yeah. So I, I definitely liked the non-reliable narrator thing, and I thought that that was a good way to reveal a mystery. I thought it was well, a good choice. It, it honestly, it set us up for the whole book, right? It really did. It set us up for the whole book. It really we, did. We're we're confused right off the bat. Right. And and they wanted that. They wanted that bad. Oh yeah, they absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. So the Sinclairs have a lot of secrets, including divorce and death. And I'm calling death a secret because when Tipper died, nobody yeah. wanted to talk about it. They didn't want to talk about how grandma died. Um, how do you feel about Penny's, which is that's Katie's mom. This is her mm-hmm. quote. Silence is a protective coating over pain. Is that the best way to treat family trauma? Absolutely not. But my family is guilty of this. Mine too. It is something we're actually breaking with my family is Mm -hmm. we are, this is actually a part of our parenting skill and I call it honest parenting. I don't know if it's a thing for other parents. I don't even know if it has a name, but I've been calling it this. We tell the curls everything Mm -hmm. unless it's going to hurt them. It's beyond their capability of comprehending Mm -hmm. or it is like grown up, grown up problems. Right. Mm -hmm. When Matt first started interviewing and was like doing all that stuff back home we told them yeah we were very honest with them we told right. them the truth because being a child in a family you feel like an outsider the room right. is always talking you don't know what is always going on people will shut up when you walk in a room because that's mm-hmm. what grown-ups do when kids come in a room because they don't want to upset children right i've it makes you feel like you're not loved or part of the family as a child right even with little things so it isn't helpful for a family is my point right like secrets help no one pushing things down and not talking about them makes no one happy and honestly her mom needed therapy they all needed therapy they all needed therapy they all needed therapy and i don't i'm not saying therapy is a fix by any means right but they should have been talking about it because it's healing to talk about somebody that's gone. Right. That has died. I, I think I get a personally, but anytime I get to share a piece of my grandmother with the girls that I've never talked about before, or right. my aunt Pam, people I loved from right. the past that are gone, right. And I get to share with them for the first time, something about that person. It right. makes me feel like a piece of that person is back in the world again. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and for me, and I didn't actually put this as a question in there, but it kind of goes into what we're talking about. Um, Katie was trying to like overcome this block in her brain by um, using metaphors from fairy tales. So it was always yeah. three of something, right? So three yeah. sisters, three bears, three princesses, three whatever. And um, when you read the stories, there's always the one prince that 
little prince that's born, he's short. And so that's Johnny mm-hmm. because they talk Johnny. about repeatedly how Johnny is the short one. Mm-hmm. And there's always the one beautiful princess that like everyone dotes on and that's Katie because she was the oldest. Um, and then there's the one that is um, – doesn't fit in because he's like the wrong color and he's trying to be fancy, but he's not. And that's Gat. And she keeps trying to tell the story. She is trying to reconcile it in her mind, but her family keeps saying, Oh, well don't tell her what really happened. Let her figure it out on her own. What she needed to do was go to therapy. therapy, Her, well, she, she tried it. Her mom said that the doctor told her to stop telling Katie. Right. It was too upsetting. Right. Which is probably true, but they should have done some other type of therapy. Like talk therapy might not have been it, but she needed to do some other type of therapy to reconcile. But really the whole family needed it. The daughters, all the aunts, they were totally fucked up. And they were treating Katie like a ghost. They were wafting around her. They were acting like she was this fragile thing. Go play with your cousins. Go play with your cousins. Go find the twins. The littles. Instead of, go find the littles. Like, Mm -hmm. instead of like, talking to her i mean she's technically almost a grown-up she is 17 right she is almost in your minds one of you bring her right. into the fold spend time with her sit down and play cards or scrabble or something just spend but, time with her but the family She'll figure was, it out but the family was pretty like fucked up in the way they handled things because like the grandpa kept trying to Lost pin the sisters man. against each other so i didn't show this yet but i know you read the audiobook so there's a map that's in this book, so pretty which we love a map so this map I is of their map. island and shows all of the sisters each have oh their own gosh. house and the grandparents have the big house which is called now I love the book. and then also there is the sinclair family tree in here as well um it so is. that is the aunts and how their families are and i this edition of this book i'm going to show this off right now because we're already showing talking about it but this is the paperback edition it includes um additional materials which are uh let me show you uh letters between it's bonus content so it's a note from the author about the book and this was the um, two and a half years after the book was the original publication. So there's notes between Katie and Gat that are in here. There's also, Aww. and they're like handwritten notes. And then there's um, her original drawing of the island and the family tree are in here. Oh, that's amazing. I know. Yeah. And then um, how I wrote the book proposal um, and why they were called liars because they never really quite explained that. And then the notes that she wrote to herself while she was writing oh, wow. this. And then a We Were Liars book club meeting with a Sinclair family menu. Oh. So it's some of the things that they frequently ate. So anyway, um, the I like family. The extra content. I love the extra content. Bonus content. Love it. So highly love recommend it. the paperback copy of this. But um, but basically, the da- the grandpa was pinning the sisters against each other, right? So one of the sisters. I think he was baddie. He no, lost he his was, but it wasn't. It wasn't because he was senile that he was doing that. It seemed to he'd been doing that his whole life. Right. So Mirren's mom, which is Bess, she has more kids. She has four mm-hmm. kids. So she needs the bigger house, which Penny has, which is Katie's mom. And Katie right. and Penny, it's just the two of them. And he's like, don't worry, I'll get you that house. Don't worry. I'll, I'll convince her to leave. Like, that's not. You can't pin no. your daughters against each other like this. No, it's but awful. I had a family like that. Like a family I Same! grew up in. Same! That's how, that's how my Sorry, dad was actually raised. That. My dad was raised that way. Like I love my grandma his siblings. Arlena. She used to do this to us grandkids. Mm-hmm. She would literally pull us aside and pull us by the arm and whisper in her ear, you know you're my favorite, right? Mm-hmm. Every well, time. I loved Arvina. Don't get it twisted. But she told every grandkid we were the favorite and then would pin us against each other. Well, Lois, everyone knows Lois's favorite. She would never actually say it, but I was 100% <laughs> favorite. Now, my dad, his parents did pin the siblings against each other. And now they're all grown ass adults in their 60s. And they all have a very like volatile relationship with each other because they Not don't know want. how to love each other because they were always oh. pinned against each other. That sucks. Um, and that's basically what's happening in this book. 
All right. So I want to talk about the language in this book, because this is one of the reasons that you like the book. There's just like some descriptive language in here. That's just like, it's just so beautiful. I mean, I text you the like first page. I know the storytelling is gorgeous. And I I know you agreed with this and like, I don't really have a question. I just, I wanted to talk about it because like the way I describe it is it's like a bowl of cereal that I just want to eat up. Like I have no idea why that's the description, but But it's it's like just, it's unique. Yeah. Because I don't have the book in front of me. What was the text I sent you? In the beginning, she's describing her cousins. Uh And she dives in and she's talking about them. But she doesn't go, oh, you know, X, Y, and Z is loving, kind, and sweet. Mm -hmm. She's coffee. She's, what is it exactly? Somebody is coffee, Um, sarcasm, and something else. Let me see if I can find it. Um. I used to be blonde, but now my hair is black. She's going in the juxtapositions there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, Johnny, he is bounce, effort, and snark. But then yes. he would hang our Barbies by the necks or shoot us with guns made of Lego. Mirren, she is sugar, curiosity, and rain. Back Matt. then, she spent long afternoons with Taft and the twins splashing at the big beach while I drew pictures on graph paper in red in the hammock on the Claremont house porch. Then Gat came to spend the summer with us. So it was coffee. She was sugar, curiosity, and rain. No, Gat is Gat. coffee, sarcasm. Where does it and describe? something else? He's in there. I know yeah. she describes him. He's later though. Yeah. Um. But I love that. I actually yeah. made Matt Knight like. I thought it was really unique, and so I was mm-hmm. talking to the family about it. I actually tried doing it with everybody, right? Because it's just here. Here it is. We- Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. Finish. His nose was dramatic, his mouth sweet, skin deep brown, hair black and waving, body wired with energy. Gat seemed spring-loaded, like he was searching for something. He was contemplation and enthusiasm, ambition and strong coffee. I could have looked at him forever. Ambition and strong coffee. Mm. But we were doing this. Contemplation and enthusiasm. Love it. But we should be doing that more, right? (laughs) Like, because... We are more than just the balance of our, our like basic descriptive words. Like Mm -hmm. my oldest Piper, she is sunshine and noise and Mm -hmm. joy, right? That is what that kid is. Mm -hmm. And and my husband, my daughter, Livia, Livia is anxiety and kindness Mm -hmm. and warmth. And, and, And I don't feel like we do that enough. Because I feel like it's telling. If mm-hmm. we talked like that, it would make us look pretentious and it would, weird. It's and so awesome. It is so awesome. Did you did you read what I put um, National Sons Day? Did you read my post for that? No, I didn't get a chance to. It says, James is heart, super intelligence, tenacious, and all the history of Mario from memory. Sam is life, joy, giggles, snuggles, and satisfying videos on YouTube. That's so apparently funny. that's how I describe people and I must be pretentious then. <laughs> I'm okay with it though. I like it. I like it. You'll allow it. <laughs> I'll allow it. I just thought, allow. like I, I the the book is very lyrical and mm-hmm. um there are definitely parts that like the way that the format in the book like I know you didn't read mm-hmm. the physical book but it's formatted like a poem. So there are really? part, yeah, there are parts that um I don't know if I can that's find interesting. an example quickly. But yeah, there are parts that are shorter lines that look like you're telling a poem and you mm-hmm. almost want to read them like you would read poetry. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, with a different cadence in your voice. I can't find That's a good interesting. example right now. But that makes um, sense about uh, that makes sense with the way the audio book narrator broke it up. Read it. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense. How was the narrator? Because I have I enjoyed it. Book. There was okay. voices and I am gapping on all of it, but it was good. I liked it. Okay. So it wasn't well, that good. terrible. All right. So Katie oh. and Gap fall in love over summer 15 because of course they do. Um, <laughs> her mom Duh. calls it a summer fling, but Katie thinks it is deeper than that. Do you think that they fell in love or would have, um, or would having him be a friend? Sorry. 
Do you like that they fell in love or would you have preferred them to just remain friends? I like that they fell in love. It Usually was, that you feel the opposite. You're like, why can't they just be friends? I feel like it was a necessary plot point. Mm -hmm. It was a necessary plot point. It wouldn't have been so traumatic for Katie if they were just friends. It wouldn't have hurt so much that he died. It right. wouldn't have been Spoiler. so traumatic. Sorry. Because, you know, we never do spoilers on this show ever. Yeah, but we weren't mm. there yet. <laughs> I, we're getting there. It's fine. But, no, but I, th I think you're right. I, I, I don't think it would have worked. It wouldn't have worked. And yeah. that's the only reason, like, I'm, like, hard on this line here mm -hmm. in this book because it, it, it was the only way it would work. Their and friendship I, was not strong enough no, for that. No, no. And I do think it was... I honestly think that they weren't really in love. I think it was more of like a summer puppy thing. Love. Because, oh, it was summer puppy and love. And Gat, Gat calls her out on that, right? So he's like, you don't know where I live. You've never seen my house. It's You've Greece. never met my mom. Huh? It's Greece. She's Sandy. He's Danny. Yeah. I think of it more of like summer camp love, right? So you have the summer... summer you find you find that person that you just absolutely adore them all summer and then at the end of the summer you're not together anymore because why would you be like you have to go home to your real life facts and that is that, summer camp love yeah and and that's that's what basically what gat was telling her like you don't really love me because i have a whole life that is not this island and my right. life doesn't look anything like your life you no. literally your dad abandoned your family and your mom went and bought a whole new life my mom can't even buy groceries <laughs> like right we're we not the live same. in separate tax brackets right for sure right right yeah it, um it, and i get and i get his beef yeah like i get it but he ain't too hard off. I know he's sitting there complaining, but he mm -hmm. gets to go to, he's always at his uncle's. He's at his cousin's. So yeah. obviously he has access to money. So he can right. stand on a high, that kind of irritated with me, with him. Because he's sitting there standing on this high horse complaining about how different their lives are. Yeah. But he's also on this fucking fancy ass island. But he is not, he's always an outsider when he's there. Like Harris makes him feel like an outsider and it's not, it's not of his own doing. Like he mm -hmm. knows that Harris has told his, his uncle and Bess that they can't get married right. or not Bess. Sorry. What was the aunt's name? I know what you're, I know what you're saying though. Um, the other aunt, the uh, other aunt. Carrie, Carrie, that Carrie can't get married to his, to his uncle because his uncle's right. Indian and basically right. threatened to disown her if right. she married, if she married him. So right. as much as Gat is welcomed on the Island, he's not a part of the family. He's right. not really there. Like he's not right. really welcome there. So it was more of a distraction for Johnny. Yeah. I think Carrie did it because she wanted a better life for Gat. She wanted to provide the same things that her kids mm -hmm. were getting. I think she loved Gat, but I think it was also a fuck you to her dad. Absolutely. Like you said, we can't get married, but I'm still going to fucking bring them because to the island. this kid is actually my family. Right. I'm still going to bring them to the island. This is still going to be my as family. Much as I love my son. Right. 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 So, um, I don't know. Um, it's there's muddy. a lot of foreshadowing. Right. What? It's muddy. For sure. It is. it is. Sorry, foreshadowing. Deep family secrets. There's Sweet a lot of foreshadowing in this book that leads to the twist that the biggest Sinclair secret is, spoiler, that Katie survived a fire that Mir Mirren, Johnny, and Gat didn't. Were you surprised by the twist? Shocked. Shocked. I thought they died in the Bronx. I thought. But, but you did think they died. And so that was what was interesting died. to me, Molly, because when I read this the first time, I did not get that at all. Well, I as was soon like, as, they're dead? Like the cousin, the one boy cousin had called her and he was talking about the house, whichever, what's the house that the liars live in? Like the, the, the on the island. There's a house on the island that the, the liars were ha inhabiting that summer 17. Yeah, uh, it was, um, sorry, let me open the book up. Anyways, they're in that house, uh -huh. right? And one of the twins called her, like, at her mom's house. Cuddle like, down. Cuddle down. They were at, he, he, he had called her, like, the night before she was supposed to come. Not one of the twins, the younger brother of the one twins. One of the younger, okay, yes. one of the boys. One mm -hmm. of the younger boys called her. One of the littles mm -hmm. called her. 
Yeah. And he was like, um, it's haunted. He was like, it's haunted. He goes, it's hot. Cuddle Down's haunt. She goes, go find, you know, go find Mirren. Mirren. She will make you feel better. And then he goes, Cuddle that's Down what I'm talking haunted. about. Cuddle Down is haunted. Mm-hmm. And he's like, she, but she, then she's like, what are you talking about? Go find Mirren. It's fine. It's not a big deal. And he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'll go find Mirren. He, and says he's like, her, he says to her, that's what I'm talking about. And only one of the sisters believes him. Yeah. She's like, what do you talk? What do you mean? Just but he was Mirren. trying to tell yeah. her that Mirren, that Mirren was haunting. a them. ghost. Right. Yeah. And, and I was like, okay, maybe they're fucking with her. You know, I mean, I screwed with my cousins a lot growing up. It, if I had technology the way these kids have technology mm-hmm. and I knew my cousin had a traumatic brain injury after years of ha- taunting me, if I, you don't think I wouldn't screw with them? Probably. Well, right. I, I mean, so it, because she has brain trauma, that's why yeah. she doesn't like put together what he's trying no. to say either. And, and but I, I was really shocked, Molly, like when right. it's revealed that they were dead the whole time that like, it's the I see dead people, right? It's the Bruce Willis yeah. at the end of. Oh yeah, it suspense. is definitely that. Uh, you're you're actually dead when when they revealed that. I was completely shocked, and that never happens to me. I well, read and- books so frequently, and then when I was going back this time and rereading it for the pod, I was like, oh yeah, there's all this evidence that they're dead. Well, the the one thing that was like an indicator for me, as well to do as these people are. They would have never let those kids destroy that house. Mm-hmm. I, you could let all of those, let the olders, let the liars live in that house for the summer. But there would have been a maid there. There would have been mm-hmm. a nanny there. They would have been doing, there would have been somebody other than the liars in that house. And I was like, that's weird. And then the aunt is out wandering. Mm-hmm. That was really weird. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, if she's really struggling with this this much, Mm-hmm. And she's like wearing Johnny's jacket and she's out walking around and it's really depressing and it's actually very sad. And I was like, okay, Johnny's definitely dead. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, because uh, that is definitely if something happened to one of my kids right now, I would definitely be doing the same. I would go steal the sweater Piper stole from me and I probably would live in it the rest of my life. Because, But there are things that like throw you off a trail too. Like yeah. they weren't going to take her to the hospital. At least that's like what Katie tells us. The only reason they right. took her to the hospital for treatment was because they couldn't warm her up. Right. Right. So she thinks right. she hit her head on a rock and that's like, you know, that's the decoy, right? That's the red herring right. is that she hit her head on a rock. I thought she hit her head in the, like, diving into the water. I thought the bigs went to the rocks at night after yeah. they had gotten hammered. And they were, like, out there talking about what they were going to do. Their big things, they, right? Yeah, they because, because there's that whole out. scene where they're like, don't jump, Katie. It's not safe. Yeah. Right, right. And I was like, oh, they got hammered, went skinny dipping, right? Right. They just... And Katie hit her head, and the reason she doesn't remember the others drowning was because they all jumped in to save her, Mm -hmm. and she washed up on shore. That was my premise. Yeah. They all, she jumped in first, hit her head, they all dived in to save her, she washed up on shore. I mean, I wasn't even, I wasn't even sure that, like, Katie didn't just have a psychotic episode and, like, try to kill herself or something, and that's how she got the injury. Like, never in a million years did I think the three characters that she spent the whole summer with were dead. Were dead. Yeah. And so, that actually brings me to my next question. What the fuck was Katie doing all summer? Like, was she actually making out with Gat's ghost? Was she, like, talking to ghosts? Or was this, like, all in her head? This was in her head. I think she has a massive traumatic traumatic brain injury, and I mm-hmm. think she has brain damage. And I think yeah, but they said it doesn't her, show up on any scans. I think this is how her brain is rationalizing how she handles the trauma. I agree. And I, I mean, is he season Steven saw Denny Duquette? Yeah, well, she had brain tumor, even with like tiny brain tumors, like they couldn't see on scans. She was seeing Denny Duquette, so. Mm-hmm. But also, that's Gray's, so. Yeah. <laughs> Comes back on tonight when we're uh, we're, filming this, we're filming this on the day of the season premiere, Gray. It's Gray's Day, baby! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. ABC hit us up. We'll start a Gray's podcast if you sponsor sure, us, ABC. Sure. We okay, have, let's do it. We could have that through our, what is it called? The, the umbrella? The besties umbrella? No, the... Patreon. I almost said, I almost oh, said Patronus. Oh, that again. is it. 
we will do episode by episode on Patreon if you guys want. <laughs> but it's a Patreon only podcast. <laughs> I, I almost said um, Patronus again. Um, so anyway. Um, no, I don't have a wand. I just, I feel like, I feel like there, I needed more information. Why do you even have a wand next to you? I have two wands. Um, I feel like I needed more information about what actually happened. Like I needed a like. sonic screwdriver. Can you, what the fuck, Molly? Focus. <laughs> um, you were, it, it was due last time. It's my turn now. <laughs> Um, I, I feel like I needed more information about like what was actually happening because like her mom is just kind of letting her wander, be at Cuddle House, um, like it, it, talk about the wires like they're still alive. They're right, right. She's not I, questioning any of it. I, I'm wondering if that was like a... Like, she was like, okay, the therapist kind of said we could bring her out here. We just kind of got to let her live it out. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so close. Just put those away. And, like, maybe the therapist was like, okay, let her go to the island. It's safe there. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on her. But let her work it out. Let her see what's going on in the area. Let her see that her cousins are gone. Maybe it'll fix things. Yeah, so but her cousins weren't gone. To her, they were still there. Right, but her mom didn't know that. Yeah. Her mom thought she was talking about them in the past tense, even though she was talking about them in present tense. Right. Yeah. And her mom was also drunk. So her and the aunts were unreliable yeah. to even take care of Katie because everybody's hammered. Grandpa has lost his damn mind. Nobody is of sound mind. Right. On this fucking island. Right. And, and the children are children, so they can't even fucking be grownups. Right. This is a terrible place. Why? Right. Great questions. I don't have answers. <laughs> Damn it. Um, so we also learned that the fire that killed the three, three of the four liars was Katie's idea. Um, the point was to burn down what her grandfather had built. Burn down that the That was manslaughter, by the way. Because, that was definitely manslaughter. Okay. Because the ants spent the whole summer fighting over possessions after Tipper died. Is this a good motivation? Are they being reckless teens? Is this a believable, like... Is this believable? This definitely feels like something that privileged white children would do. Yeah. Especially drunk, right? They it reminds me of something that would happen on Pretty Little Liars. It is definitely a privileged white kid thing. Mm -hmm. This is def and they were hammered right by this point. They were really yeah. drunk on the auntie's wine. So like this is this was not surprising. But mm -hmm. And what didn't surprise me either was grandpa covering it up and hiding it. None of yeah. this surprised me. None of right. this surprised me. Um, I lost my thought. Jump in while I remember where I was. No, I mean, I'm, I agree with you. Like it was definitely first world problems, right? My, our parents are fighting over who gets the biggest house and the right. certain and tablecloths and the kids don't care about it. So they're just going to, literally burn it to the ground not figuratively like, but that's what I, I, that's what the media anytime you see like a tv show or a movie uh like cruel intentions for example the movie right. from the 90s cruel intentions like that is 100 percent what happens in that movie right like okay i have burn it to now. the ground so a couple things one i'm surprise the aunties aren't mad at her i can't or, believe that they all come back to the island i i one i'm surprised by never that. would i do that two i'm not surprised they covered it up it is a very privileged white person thing to cover up murder right um three she should have had consequences for this right i mean it was an accident I mean, but, yes, but she definitely purposely set that place on fire. Well, but they all With participated in setting the place on fire. They helped set but the place But she survived. On fire. If, if Gat would have survived, they would have pressed charges. Probably. So, I mean, probably in his mind, Granddad goes, that Indian boy did this. I bet you dollars to donuts. And he rationalized it away. And mm -hmm. I just, I don't know, man. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it, I mean, but I do like how he, grandfather, 
rebuilt the place to be as uncomfortable as possible to torture himself. Like, yep. that's pretty self-sabotaging. I'll, I'll tell you, if this was reality and it was my reality, there's absolutely no way you'd get me back on the island. No. I, I would not go back to- Sell that fucking home. My, and they would have sold it. Yeah. They would have sold it and bought another island and another fancy, rich, white person place. The fact that the ants are still fighting over who gets what after your kids died to try to show you that this is not worth fighting over. And the amount of money this family has, mm -hmm. buy another one of those things. Right. Buy another one of those things. Why is that specific tablecloth so important to you? Go to fucking Bloomingdale's and buy the same exact fucking yeah. one. It's you guys are ridiculous. Awful. Awful. ridiculous um i want to talk about katie's dad for a bit so he basically abandons the family that's how the story starts um she spends summer 16 with him but mostly he's not present is this a reflection on the Sin sinclair family or is the author choosing to just focus on the liars i think that's the summer right after the accident well no i mean that he's just absent Yes, he, she goes with him the summer after the accident, but like mostly her dad is just absent from the book. So is this like the author trying to focus on the story of the liars and not bring in all these extra characters? Or is this because the Sinclair family is like this? I think this is just a Katie retelling. And okay. her focus in this book is the liars. Okay. She wouldn't have the summer after just take off on a European tour with her dad yeah. if he was an absent father. Yeah, her father, her mother wouldn't allow her to just take off with a guy he, she hasn't spent time with or talked to in a year. Yeah. I think it's just I don't think he's an absent father. I think he's just not a part of the storyline and it not important in this point. I think it's a, a generation repeating itself. I yeah. think it's Katie doing what her mom did, what her grandparents did, which is ignored the problems. Yep. Right. So we're just not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk that, about that shameful part of my life. We're just going to let that it go. that scene, it, it, and a great example of that is that scene where she's talking about bleeding from her eyes and her veins mm -hmm. and after her dad leaves and her mom tells her to buckle it up or whatever her mom says. And yeah. then the bleeding just stops. Yeah. Right? It, her it, mom's it, like, it, we don't do this. We we're don't do Sinclair's. This. Stop it. Yeah. It's just, um, yeah. Have your feelings, yo. Have your feelings. Mm -hmm. Seriously. All right. So there's actually a prequel to this book that came out, oh. I think, this summer, but definitely this year. It's called Family of Liars. And that one is about the ants. So my question is, do you want to read it? Will I you read would it? add it to TBR. It goes on the TBR. I don't know if it's high on the TBR, mm -hmm. but it goes on the TBR. For sure. I, I think it just would be interesting to see, like, the foundation of, like, where the ants yeah. started their secrets. What motivation so. mm -hmm. for where they are now. Yeah. How did they get from point A to point B? Yeah. Right? I think it'll be interesting. Why is, why is, it's Lucy, right? Katie's mom, isn't that her name? Penny. Penny. Oh, that's why. Okay, that makes sense. Lucy, Penny, and Livia were my top three names for Liv. <laughs> Got it. So that's why they're associated together. Sorry. Um, her name's Penny. Penny, I want to see what made Penny this rough. Mm -hmm. I want to see he, yeah. what led her to be so cold. Yeah. Because she is a heartless woman. I want to hear. Even after her daughter is dead, like nearly yeah. died and yeah. barely surviving. Yeah. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Like, I want to see the story of who built the kids that were in this book. And Yo, I, I think it's yeah. interesting because, um, you know, we know that they have to have family secrets already. And I also think it would be interesting to see more of Tipper because we don't get a full look at her because she's the grandma and she died. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be interesting to see the, how the parents, how the parents are as I parents wanna, and not grandparents. Right. I, I also want to see how he behaves to the daughter's, Right. In that time frame. The is he story still... of the three princesses, I want to see him interact with the, th the yes. three princesses. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think yeah. that is, and honestly, it's important for this story. It's yeah. important for this story because. And the, and the prequel takes place on the island too. It's Good. just. Um, I love that place. I hate that place, but I love that place. Um, I've got a link on here. 
So let me pull it up. So it says um, that it takes place on the island. How many years before? A gazillion. 10,927. That's how long ago it was. Back to the story of another summer, another generation, and the secrets that will haunt them for decades to come. So it doesn't say how many years before, but... Um, 10 million it, it's the it's the parents it's the aunt they so. are as old as god they <laughs> joined the dinosaurs that's why they're so cold she's turning it into a fantasy you just don't know it yet <laughs> are you done you're done with me are you done with me <laughs> are you done with me never molly never <laughs> Okay, did you have another question? I'm sorry. I do. Uh, So the rights have been purchased for this to be turned into a movie, but there hasn't been any movement in it. This Um, is not a movie. This is a show. Okay, that's a good point. I think it would be a great series on Netflix. It's better as a series, I think. Something like that. Um, But uh, E. Lockhart recently tweeted that, quote unquote, maybe a movie would happen. Um, And I'll put a link below about that. Um, But she was sworn to secrecy. So I'm thinking there's something in the works, but I just wanted to know if dream casting for Katie, not the rest of the characters. Maybe. I only dream cast Katie. So you dream cast everybody. So you. after I watched um, the summer, I turned pretty on Amazon mm-hmm. and I read this, at, I re- watched that during the summer and I watched, read this now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now that everybody's caught up and know my brain frame, I see Amazon taking this on. Okay. P- turning it into a summer series. Like they did, with the fucking, I turned the summer I turned pretty, mm-hmm. but casting. I don't hate the idea of Amazon doing it. Why is that? Because the other things that they've adapted, I haven't really liked. Um, like you they, know, they adapted Panic, and I, I gave up on it after two episodes. It was just not it for me. Honestly, who I'm picturing is like a young Drew Barrymore, uh, Kristen Stewart, Jennifer Garner mix. Not Garner, Jennifer um, Hunger Games. Lawrence. Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence. So the three of them. Like awkward goofy a little or like angry that's like the 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 character the actress i'm hit um for for me it's mckenna grace how do i know that name who is that just google her um she was in the most recent ghostbusters ghostbusters movie um she's been in like a lot of stuff but just google her oh i like her she was in young sheldon See, I didn't watch that show, but yes. She was she would be good. She would be good. That's- I don't see her as Katie. That's more um I see her more as Miriam. Mira? No, no. she's Katie. She's got that blonde hair and that pro- she's also very precocious. Mm-hmm. She's very precocious. What was your good read on this? I'm assuming a four or a five. Um, I gave it a four. Um let's see. I gave it a four. This was actually the second time I read it. And the first time I didn't rate it, which is weird for me. Well, I rated it, but I didn't write um, a review. A, a review. Um, but basically I said um, the story is beautiful and tragic was like the the main part of that is I gave it a four out of five. Um, and I really enjoyed this book both times I read it, even knowing that they were dead already. I still really enjoyed it and was still like kind of taken aback that they were ghosts mm-hmm. um, it's I very picked, sixth sense it is yeah very I, sixth sense. for sure and that's why i picked it for spooky season because last year in october we did a whole month of spooky reads we and did. you hosted and we had we had decided after two months of us hosting a whole month to ourselves that we were never going to do it's that again. too much it was just too much to put on us so i said okay well i'll come up with some spooky books for october and this was the one that like i knew i liked it right um, and, and you knew i not, would and, and I knew you would. And we ended up not really doing that because we had our fantastic guest a few weeks ago, um, oh, yeah. Kendra Thomas. And we we wanted to promote her book and, and that comes out next month. And so we didn't want to push her back any. So um, mm-hmm. 
so we didn't end up doing spooky reads, but I still think this works for spooky month. It sure does. Um, I think it's really creepy. And the idea that she's like, you know, she's hanging out with ghosts all summer. She I is. mean, and it's, it's a metaphor for like the trauma, right? It's not just like, she's literally hanging out with ghosts, which she is, but it's a metaphor of living with the ghosts of her past. Of our life. Happens, it's right. I mean, we all do it, right? Like we're right. all like, we're all haunted in one way or another. Hers the, are just manifesting IRL in front of her. And the fact that they can't see her brain injury. And so they think what is happening is that she's just protecting herself. And then when she goes to the Island, it's, it's her ghost confronting her. Oh yeah. It's her, her being, you know, forced to deal with it. Um, mm -hmm. There's a brilliance to this book and there I've never is. read anything else by E. Lockhart, but I, I think I will. Like she's got I other so books. Um, she's definitely worth adding to the TBR. It is really good. And her, 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 her voice is clear. Yeah. This author's voice is clear. I know who she is. I mean, this book won best book of the year by NPR time, uh, named a best book of the year by NPR time, the wall street journal and the Boston globe. Like it's okay. a good book. It's a good book. It's a good book. It's a good book. Um, so if you haven't read this one, I know we just ruined it for you. Cause we told you that we're going to, but... I'm going to make Matt read it. I'm going to make him take a break on Will Trent and I'm going to put it in his audiobook. Okay. Thank you. Fair. I'm making Matt read it. I've decided. Fair. I'm not even giving him a choice. <laughs> Do you have anything else? Or you want to talk about what I, we're doing next week? Let's talk about next week. All right. So next week we are reading this book, which is The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Madolsky. Um, This cover has absolutely fucking nothing to do with the book Look, and I hate it. You see the binding? There's yeah. A knife. The, there's a knife on it. Yeah. But uh, this is a library copy. Support local libraries. Yay. Um, but I, you also work at the library, so you can take books as you please. That go. one is not available at my, my library. I actually had to Shut get it from, fuck up. I had to get it from my local <laughs> library and not the library where, where I work. You need to coax your library into having a book besties display. <laughs> I've seen on book besties. Listen, that's a great idea, except there are a lot of things we talk about on this pod that I really don't want people in admin to like. I definitely, I definitely embarrass the shit out of you. Like, I don't want them to know this side of me. <laughs> that's true. That's and valid. also, I never reveal on here where Which I work. Library? And I also don't even would... tell people where I live. Like, we've talked about the fact that I live in Virginia. But that's If you it. have a library and you really want to fuck with people, just put a as seen on Book Besties display. <laughs> Randomly. <laughs> yeah. And, and when people really cool. ask you, they'll be like, who the fuck are Book Besties? And you're going to be like, oh my god. Let me tell you. They're about, about to read the Mary Shelley Club. Let Have you read that book? Let me tell you about my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are getting punchy here for some reason, and it's four o'clock. I don't know what's wrong with us. I don't either. And I was off today. Okay, well, <laughs> I think that's it. Um, we'll see you all next week. We're going we're to talk about the Mary Shelley Club. I all guess. Right. Love y'all. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Book Besties. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The views discussed here are those of Molly and April, not those of anyone else. Today's book was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Your book besties are Molly Biggs and April Watkins, editing by Thomas Watkins, and music is Sleep Sweetly by Prigida. Don't forget to follow Book Besties on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. If you'd like to contact the Book Besties, please email us at bookbestiespod at gmail.com or visit our website, bookbestiespodcast.com.